Welcome to the Real News Network in Baltimore. I'm Kim Brown. Earlier this month, Donald Trump held a listening session at the White House to discuss the status of health care and to tout the then upcoming vote to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. Secretary Price and I, along with my entire administration and a lot of people in the Senate and a lot of people in the House, are committed to repealing and replacing this disastrous law with a health care plan that lowers cost, expands choice, and ensures access for everyone. That was on March 13th. So fast forward to late last Thursday and Friday when House Speaker Paul Ryan was forced to withdraw the GOP-authored American Health Care Act because it lacked support amongst the Republican caucus. I spoke to the president just a little while ago. I told him that the best thing I think to do is to pull this bill, and he agreed with that decision. I will not sugarcoat this. This is a disappointing day for us. Doing big things is hard. All of us, all of us, myself included, we will need time to reflect on how we got to this moment, what we could have done to do it better. But ultimately, this all kind of comes down to a choice. Are all of us willing to give a little to get something done? Are we willing to say yes to the good, to the very good, even if it's not the perfect? Because if we're willing to do that, we still have such an incredible opportunity in front of us. The question now is whether there's an opportunity to seize upon the shortcomings of Obamacare and, of course, the Republican-led health care repeal and replace failure and expand Obamacare to cover all Americans. Is this country ready for health care for all? Well, joining us now to discuss this is Dr. Adam Gaffney. Adam is a physician and a writer with the focus on health care politics, policy, and history. He's also an instructor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and a pulmonary and critical care physician at the King Cambridge Health Alliance. He is the secretary and a member of the board of directors of the single payer advocacy organization Physicians for a National Health Care uh, Health Program. So, Adam, we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. So, Adam, Senator Bernie Sanders appeared Sunday on CNN State of the Union, and he announced his intention to introduce such legislation that would provide health care for all. Let's have a look. Of course. Obamacare has serious problems. Deductibles are too high. Premiums are too high. The cost of health care is going up at a much faster rate than it should. Ideally, what, where we should be going is to join the rest of the industrialized world and guarantee health care to all people as okay. a right. And that's why I'm going to introduce a Medicare for All single-payer program. Short term, this is what we could do. Mm -hmm. President, well, let me, right now, you know, President Trump said a whole lot of stuff on the campaign trail. One of the things he talked about was lowering the cost of prescription drugs. There is wonderful legislation right now in the Senate to do that. President Trump, come on board. Let's work together. Let's end the absurdity of Americans paying by far the highest prices in and, the world for prescription drugs. And what about... Mm -hmm. Are deductibles too high? Of course they are. Are there some parts of the country where people don't have a choice? Yes, that's true. Let us do, among other things, a public option. Let us give people in every state in this country a public option from which they can choose. Let's talk about lowering the age of Medicare eligibility from 65 to 55. Let's deal with the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Those are areas that we can work together on. Okay. So this is an issue that Bernie campaigned hard on while seeking the Democratic nomination for president. And a Gallup poll taken in May of 2016 seems to indicate that a majority of Americans are with him in favor of a Medicare for all system. So, Adam, if this is what the people want, then what is holding lawmakers back? I mean, we've seen the backlash against Republican lawmakers from their constituents in town halls across the country uh, upset at them at the thought of the ACA going away. So why not step out on a limb and make ACA bigger and cover everyone? Why not indeed? Um, I think we should. Um, this is absolutely the right next smart step. Um, now, um, what is holding them back? I mean, there's a number of factors. There's no question that the lobbying power of, um, you know, the so-called medical industrial complex plays a role. Uh, let's be honest, the health insurance industry is in no rush to see single payer 
um, come about and their role um, more or less completely supplanted. So um, there's a lot of powerful forces that are aligned against single payer. However, there are many more powerful forces um, on the grassroots level that are advancing this cause, namely a majority of the U.S. population, as you alluded to, supports single payer. Um, that Gallup poll found 58 percent of the nation was in support of a federally funded health care program like single payer. So we have the popular support. Um, we have the policy evidence and the science. Um, so what's really missing at this point is political will. Um, but that's something that we can change and that people are working to change around the country. And I think that Sanders' announcement is a step in the right direction. So it seems that we have a lack of political will in Washington, but we have an overabundance of greed on behalf of the healthcare industry. Because when we hear constantly about how Americans pay the most for health care and comparative to our, you know, Western European industrialized nation neighbors or, you know, allies, we see the least when it comes to um, how much care and access that Americans actually have. So what is the disconnect here? Is it the health care industry that is standing in the way uh, between affordable health care and what Americans can have access to? It certainly is. And I, let's be honest, even within the Democratic Party, there's a divide. Um, as you uh, mentioned, the issue of single payer was a major dividing point in last year's Democratic primary campaign uh, between uh, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Sanders strongly uh, supporting a single payer plan. Um, Clinton uh, being quite opposed to it. In fact, using the phrase, um, quote, uh, that, that single payer quote would never ever happen. So there's a divide even uh, within the more liberal of the two um, political parties. And so, um, yes, the corporate health industry, the corporate health care industry is opposed. Um, but there's also a lot of work that needs to be done uh, within our, um, uh, you know, within the political class as well um, to actually um, take, move towards single payer. So we understand that the Affordable Care Act, when initially proposed by President Obama in uh, late 2009 or early 2009, I mean, it took 13 months for this bill to be authored. He held a number of working sessions, uh, bipartisan working sessions. So when we're talking about Medicare for all, can this be done in one fell swoop or will it have to be done incrementally? How do you envision Medicare for all coming to the United States, Adam? Well, I think if Medicare could happen in one fell swoop, then Medicare for all can happen in one fell swoop. Medicare was created and everybody at age 65 or older um, got health insurance. It wasn't overnight, but it was pretty quick. Um, and so if we're talking about simply giving Medicare to those um, below age 65, I don't see why that cannot happen in one fell swoop. There's no logistical reason why it's impossible. Um, I should mention that although we envision this, and or, or Sanders envisions this as Medicare for all, um, it's important to emphasize that we're talking about an improved and expanded Medicare for all. Medicare is a good system, but it has some flaws that need to be corrected. Um, you know, if we're going to universalize it, um, and so I think we should continue to push for Medicare for all in one fell swoop, as ambitious as that may sound, uh, because it is possible. And let's not forget that um, incremental steps can sometimes turn into diversions. Um, if we spend the next five years fighting for a public option, um, even if we win, um, we're going to be left with something that won't fix the fundamental problems and flaws in the American health care system. So I think it's important to think big and push ahead for the solution that will solve the major problems of the U.S. health care system. Adam, you, you being a physician, a um, healthcare practitioner, you're dealing with these things on a regular basis. What specific things about the Affordable Care Act, and as you alluded to with Medicare in general, what needs to be fixed about these programs in your opinion? Well, with respect to the Affordable Care Act, it reduced uninsurance by 20 million, but it left more than that uninsured. So for instance, the Congressional Budget Office estimates that in 10 years from now, with the Affordable Care Act in place, 28 million people will remain uninsured. Um, now, Trump Care would have increased that uh, by 24 million, but that doesn't mean the status quo is acceptable. Okay, so one thing we need to do is get rid of uninsurance. Number two, we need to get rid of underinsurance. So again, many people have health care that they have difficulty afford using. Uh, why is that? Because they have high co-payments, deductibles, which have been going up uh, substantially 
um, over the last 10 years. And so underinsurance needs to be addressed. And the best way to address underinsurance is a universal plan um, like Bernie has proposed that would not include cost sharing. It sounds radical, but we can do it, and we know we can do it because other countries do it. That means you get hospitalized and insurance covers the bill. You don't need to worry about paying a deductible. It sounds crazy, but it really can work. And so those are the two things I'd mention right now. Let's get rid of uninsurance and let's get rid of un underinsurance, and it's doable. Adam, as you said, other countries do this now. They've been doing it for some time. In your opinion, which country does healthcare for all the best, and which model do you think the United States could probably emulate? Obviously, our needs are in are individual. We have a very large country, huge population, but who does Medicare the best in the world, as far as you know? I mean, look, every healthcare system has strengths and weaknesses, and and um, I will. I'm not going to dodge your question, but just as a just as a, um, a, a sort of pre uh, preamble, um, you know, we're trying to take the best of what exists in the U.S. healthcare system and combine it with the best of what um, other international um, examples offer. So I think if we turn up to our ca uh, neighbors to the north in Canada, I think they do a very good job of providing healthcare to everyone through a single payer system. They don't have copayments for doctors' visits. They don't have deductibles or copayments for hospital visits. Um, you know, there was just an article um, a study in the Annals of Internal Medicine um, about two weeks ago that came out. It found that people with cystic fibrosis in Canada live 10 years longer than their counterparts in the United States and that they get more lung transplants, okay? And we're supposed to be the big high-tech uh, healthcare country. So that's just one example of our, of our northerly neighbors um, doing a better job and helping people live longer as a result of systemic differences. So I think a single-payer system similar to what they have in Canada uh, would be um, a step in the right direction for the United States. Obviously, that's going to be combined with um, aspects of the U.S. healthcare system that work quite well. We've been speaking with Dr. Adam Gaffney. He is a physician and a writer with a focus on health care policy and history, along with politics. He's an instructor of medicine at Harvard's Medical School and a pulmonary and critical care physician at the Cambridge Health Alliance. He's also secretary and a member of the board of directors of the single-payer advocacy organization, Physicians for a National Health Program. Dr. Gaffney, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.